Hello everybody, welcome to the quarter-final between Crucifer and his Chaufs and Hancock and his Kemri. In the booth with me is Purple Chest and Fimey. Hello! Hello, hello! Hello everybody, this is supposed to be a great game. It's one of the best uh, uh, Dwarfs coaches versus one of the best uh, Kemri teams that I have ever seen in my life. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what a, what a treat of a quarter-final. Um, without throwing too many spoilers out, we've already had some incredible matches. Uh, and this one looks on paper to be an absolute feast. Yeah, two incredible teams. Uh, there's only an apothecary for Cruz as the inducements. Uh, yeah, and as Fimey says, best uh, best Kemri team I've probably ever seen. Yep. Block on every single Tomb Guardian. One of them's plus strength, loads of guard. Um, Hatch four throw ra, move up throw ra, pom jump up blitz blitz ras. Yeah, um, it, it's it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, if you really wanted to push for it, you could throw some stand firm, a, a couple bit of more stand firm on the team guardians. But I mean, it's it's lovely. It's absolutely lovely. It's one of the best Camry teams I think I've ever seen on any format. Mm -hmm. um, and Hancock is a very very decent coach. You know, this is not his first time in the chalice. Uh, I think it's his second. Um, and yeah. he's, you know, he's taken out some big scalps to be here. He's absolutely earned that right, and uh, he's done a really good job with this team so far. Really seems to know how to use it well. So we're in for a, f a, a crack in time from that side. The Chorf team, I mean, it's a cruise for Chorf team. It's it's solid. It's well built. It's got all the things you'd expect it to have. It's maybe a tiny bit light on claw. Um, it's only got the two, um, and only one of those poms. So that's perhaps a little lighter than you'd expect. But there is a plus strength bull and a plus strength beard. Um, the hobgobs are a little ordinary for him. You usually expect to see all sorts of stat ups back there, uh, and that that isn't the case here. Um, but certainly, Crucifer knows knows the chalice, knows Jorfs, and knows what he's doing here. He's already chipped one uh, skeleton that isn't coming back, but uh, it was just a, a filthy little DP. Won't be hugely missed. What? Well, here we are, poised and ready. Yep. So Crucifer has uh, a chorf, all the chorfs are blue head, which is, gives a lot of advantage, a lot of equity, and one of them, the one without any skill, is named after me. So this is my big chance to win the chalice at last. <laughs> yeah. Without any any proper talent, just, you know, the rest of the team. <laughs> Does he go for the uh, hit on the blocker here? I mean, he can have mighty blow hit, can't he, from the uh, Tomb Guardian there? Or he could even pom him, but if he poms him, he, he's probably getting dirty played. Uh, dirty player foul, that's the problem, isn't it? So he probably can't pile on, but he could go for a mighty blow hit on the claw pom. Is he, though? I mean, are you really believing Crucifer's going to foul heavy with uh, a bench of only one? I think he's probably going to foul him, yeah. Probably going to foul the jump yeah, up Yeah, I think, I think the jump up pommer you would. But outside of that, maybe not. Um, I mean, the, the obvious target is the stand firm that's pushed forwards. Uh, it is only a mighty blow, so he's not going to necessarily hate leaving a, a strength five on it if you don't get the power. Um, the rookie over the other side is another target, but it, it slightly pulls a Tomb Guardian out of place, doesn't it? Neither of them are places you'd want to pile on, I suppose. Yeah. You could on the stand firm, but as if you hit it with the, the POM piece, it's not going to stand firm, is it? Exactly, yeah. Uh, yes, constant hang over, yeah, totally. Yeah, it's a standard because they're amazing skills. Gar, Mighty Blow, oh, oh, and the third yeah, one. Hundred percent constant hangover. I mean, you, before they had mutation access, you just built the beards with guard and mighty blow, uh, and then possibly even piling on, uh, and now you just add claw into that stack if you get a double, uh, because you want any of them to be ready for that double. Yeah, the uh, the induced apple. I mean, he couldn't cut. Maybe, maybe Hancock could have cut, but then that'd be that. You don't want to cut, do you? Like, you don't want to cut to prevent the apple. So really, I guess neither could cut more. Obviously, Cruz couldn't couldn't re take away his bench to get an, a wizard, could he? Like that's, no, that's too crazy. No, so. I mean, cutting to eleven against anything that hits as hard as these Kemri can hit, even with AV nines and thick skull, um, would be a little risky. Uh, Hancock with a bench of two, again, that's about the minimum you'd want, isn't it? Skeletons yeah. are going to disappear, as we've seen, one's gone already. Yeah, I think uh, they're both about as lean as they would want to be. Yeah, 
skeletons aren't a terrible answer to to claw obviously the um the 87 everything's 87 to claw and uh, the thick skull does help a little This was quite all right from uh, Hancock, wasn't it? Apart from, is you see, so he no hesitation from Cruz now going for the uh, claw pom yep. claw pom violence. Yeah, absolutely. It's pom. it's the yeah. piece that has the most chance to do him damage, isn't it? So it has to go. Mm. Do you wonder whether Hancock should have gone for that? But never mind. And it's hard, isn't it? Right, armor nine, thick skull, very hard to hurt. Of course, I, I mean, I, I does not have thick skull. Poor little. I like the shape. I mean, imagine if that single piece had been one square further in, then the only way it could be hurt is with the uh, the bull coming around the back for it, and you quite like a bull around that back. But if it's one further in, then the tomb guardian can be two deed. Which yeah, is, but it's strength six. Yeah, but it can still. Which like, means, still it, it the... means he has to commit everything to do it. But he has. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah I mean, he's, he he's doing it anyway, isn't he? Because <laughs> he's staying on it after this hit. Yeah. Wait, hasn't he blocked his own path for the blitz? No, no, he's he's he's, he's hitting the bomber. Yes, but it does mean it's now a go for it, doesn't it? But yeah, it, was anyway. it, was it always anywhere. was. It always yeah, was. it was anyway. Okay, okay, okay. Well, this is Ooh. the key moment. Does this work? Ooh. And what does Hancock get to do back? Got to greet it. And still doing? doesn't get the power. I hit the strength six. Oh, he had guard. Guard was covered by the jump up. He was hitting the strength six all, mm -hmm. all along. Unbelievable. Wow. Well, this is a great blitz now, isn't it? You can blitz him and then get the uh, block on the on his killer. Oof. Yeah. I'm, I'm just working out what I want to hit and what my priorities are. I mean, obviously the pom piece has to be pomped. Yeah. I think your strength six has to blitz without my he doesn't need just like your strength six hits his strength five and then everyone else. Yeah, I mean, I think that bull strength five is a, a classic thing to just knock over, isn't it? That's always good to do. You might chip it, it's very unlikely, but it's, it's where you want a guard in there anyway. It messes up his move up that wing. Yeah. I mean, it would be lovely to hit the other claw. Um, but you probably can anyway, well, you I think. Can, yeah. you, you can hit yes, all, you I mean, knock all down the line. You can just knock all down the line here. You can knock over put yeah, the strength you put the bull and the claw. You can knock all these yeah. over, get the get the tomb guardian in, get this tomb guardian on there for the guard. Like it's, yeah, it's yeah. Lots, all sorts of things can happen. So it's all about what he locks up first. I couldn't one of the mummies come around in front of the other bull before this hit, but the hit's fine anyway. I mean, block on all the mummies makes it so much easier to not worry about those one in nines, isn't it? Yeah. But I think this move he's about to do with one of the mummies I might have done first. It's it's you know, it's nitpicking. You could also GFI with that with the mummy, um, even double GFI with the mummy at the end. There's a possibility, but yeah, I mean, this is the option. okay. Yeah, I mean, this yeah, I mean, and particularly if you're not moving the other one, you didn't need them both there. Yeah. Over keeping that flank secure, the stand firm does it all by itself, particularly with the um, the others. No result. Oof. The other skeleton behind it. Oh. Does Hancock re-roll? He has three rolls. This could be it, but I don't think he gets fouled. He gets fouled. I think. I yes, think he can. He can pile on because the dirty player is yeah. just there waiting. Oh, he I didn't get realize this guy had stood up. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, I think he's probably going to struggle to hit the strength six with the claw again. I yeah. don't see that being very realistic. Um, and depending how the rest of this turn goes, it could be that he's not left with a great deal. The, the strength really coming into play well here if, if Hancock is prepared to take a couple of risks. He, he should come in here. Oh, he thinks he's going to GF. Yeah. I didn't really like the GFI, I prefer just coming in here, then you can punch him, can't you? Yeah. I would prefer I put in the Aptum Guardian uh, between the Strength 4 and the Stanford and Chorf. Yeah, I quite and like that position uh, to locking up that to, corner. To Chorf, and you can actually hit 3, four. No, 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 you just lift in but... Now he can hit, now he can hit the, uh, I mean he already could, now he's probably got to hit the uh, ball. 
so that you can hit the other guy, but no, he's not hitting the bull, he's hitting the claw. And if you hit the bull there, and then you get the follow, then you can still hit the other strength four, can't you? But... Yeah, exactly. But it, it does denude a bit from the other side. I mean, what he's got good here is a really strong centre to this. <sighs> yeah, no, I, I didn't like that GFI. But, I thought he, it was a possibility, but... Okay. Yeah, I think he's weakened the left flank yeah, too much. way too much, uh, as we're looking at it. The one that is uh, covered by two skeletons and a smile. Yes, yeah, yeah, that, 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 that stand for um, Tomb Guardian. Yeah, yeah that's why I wanted, I prefer the Tomb Guardian, you know, yeah. tagging the strength for uh, Chorf and the something in Chorf, then, you know. Yeah. I mean, the advanced uh, rookie dwarf. Covered. Yeah, the advanced rookie dwarf can be completely ignored and left there just to take a hit. It's doing a good job just by doing that. The other bull, the one that's down, can dodge off. You could probably dodge the hobgoblin off and just leave the mighty blow dwarf there. The strength one can take a hit outwards. The other bull can dodge off. I mean, you can move the entire team to the left here if you really want to, bar about two pieces. Yeah, it wasn't. It was a pretty poor turn, uh, block dice. But also, you know, I think I think that would have been a huge to have the tomb guardian there. And get that 2D on the strength four instead of a 1D. Yeah. I mean, just not having it on you is a good place for it to be. Mm. Yep. Although Hancock does come rolling with an enormous chunk of guard, doesn't he? And when you add it to all of this strength, it's brutal. Yeah, that's the thing. Yes, the Tomb yes. Guardians are incredible, all with block and guard, but then he's got two block guard skeletons as well. Yeah, I mean, the two block skeletons get through so much work in this team as well. Um, nah, you can take those those out kind of really, players really are always so good, you know, guard blocks, zombies, skeletons, mm -hmm. or, that. or uh, hog goblins, you know, they're always so good at having those uh, skills. Yeah, hard because position, right, target. but when you do, total game changes, because yeah. they allow everything else to work so much better and easier. Yeah, and I hate it just exposing him for no reason, right? If yeah, you, me if too. If you put in the guard there, then if you put in the two <sighs> guardian guard, I'm, then that's protecting yeah, him as well. I, I felt there was... Well, either with him, you go, you have the move to get all the way around and get onto the back side of the line. Or you're tagging a piece, and he wasn't really doing either. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I just, yeah. And it wasn't a piece I would have exposed. I perhaps would have kept him back for a better option later. Yeah, that would seem a random, a rather random exposure. Yeah, it, it, it did, didn't it? it didn't, I didn't see what it was really accomplishing, but I hoped it would become clearer when everything else moved, and it just didn't. Who's dicing? Oh, I, mean, I, was, I suppose it kept the blitz coming backwards, didn't it? Because it created a little bit of a threat in the backfield. So I guess that's a positive. Yeah. <laughs> it's looking a little rough because he's uh, Crucifer throwing the block dice. Next turn is uh, Hancock throwing the block dice <laughs> in more than a few pieces. And that's going to be when uh, things are going to get really, really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is nowhere near solved, is it? He's no, no, no. There is to, to the left, but it's it's a tiny bit half-hearted, and I I mean that's why I would have dodged the other. I'd have used the strength of the piece, strength piece to advance through one of the skeletons on the far side, and then I would have dodged the other bull off as well. Oh, look at me dodging there! <laughs> <laughs> Six little four plus there. I don't think he'd have re-rolled it, obviously, but it's no. it's nice when they work, and it wasn't really a problem if it failed. Yes, also, you avoid uh, getting hit by the bomber there. Yeah, I mean, I would... Actually, I wouldn't mind taking that hit, but it, it's better where he is. Maybe remain next to the Strength 6 uh, Tomb Guardian, basically because yes, it's another guard piece. Yeah. yeah, I might have dodged off and landed on him as well, but any of those three pieces tied up is fine, and tying that one up, which can't yeah. then kill you, is probably a good option. Yep. Because now the... Tomb Guardian with the, uh, the, the under it, under the strength six, can hit the chorf, and then the strength six can just uh, get in contact with the bulls. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, now the strength six can go where it wants, and the option of it not doing that is always better, I think. Especially with an other mighty blow, it's it's quite yeah, it's quite. It, it, it's a tie it. downable piece, isn't it? With a lot of TV, and it, it would definitely be worth the rookie dwarf, I that think. Yep, yeah, that's why nobody tell Tr Trific this, but that's why Mighty Blow on uh, on Lizardmen is totally fine because 
you know, if they've got block guard, if you if you stick a guy on them, you're pretty happy with that. But if they've got block mighty blow, you really can't afford like you know you can't afford the weight of strength four hits then, can you? So yes, I mean you need to think about much more carefully about how long am I going to be able to do this for? Yeah. Am I prepared yeah. to lose that piece in two or three turns? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not break tackle though. <laughs> I probably will have blitzed the the hobo that is exposed. The where's the attacker the hobo? Just because yeah. it's a soft target. Yeah, I would I wouldn't have minded doing this hit first, and then and then he could have pommed the uh, the stand firm guy here, and he's pretty safe towards the blitz if he if he, I know he'd have to expose. This. <laughs> no, he could have assisted with the uh, edge four, and then he could have covered the foul, potentially. But yeah, blitzing the hobos. But the bad, the bad thing is, of course, on the one in nine, isn't it? I think. Uh, I guess you've got jump up, so it's not that bad, is it? Yeah, you get jump up, and you get yeah. you know your mummy friends to protect you. Yeah, it's not that bad. You do have your mummy friends, yeah. <laughs> because Cross at this point, Cruz was so committed that the idea of him getting a lot of assists into a foul is kind of hard to believe. That's true, yeah. Because even if you have mighty blow, you know, hitting armor nine. You are falling into Crucifer hands there. Yes. I mean, because you're going to get hit back. And no, no, not all your players have uh, armor 9 when it comes to Claw or uh, Mighty Blow and all that. Yeah, but we're not all shoe blanc. Sometimes if people hit dwarves, they do get casualties. Um, oh, yeah. I've, I've experienced. <laughs> and sometimes when you hit things, they don't die. I'm going to find everyone who no. plays Norse in real life and just beat them to within an inch of Maybe their fucking life. Maybe I just need life. to uh, become French or Russian, but... Um... Yeah. Um, thanks, for that. thanks for or, that. the minor talk. And, or a um, French speaking Russian like in the good old days of the Tsar. <laughs> um, hello, Espangladesh. Uh, do you have any tips for playing Norse? Yeah. It's rough. I, they're rough. Um, I mean, that is the problem, right? When you're playing the actual heavy teams like Orcs and stuff, they just they just they just batter you. Um, so my advice would be: don't do it to yourself. Um, use a good team instead. <laughs> um, my advice would be: yeah, don't to just coach something else. But if you have to, and I presume you're coaching as Norse. Um, first of all, just smash yourself in the face a couple of times before each game because you deserve it. Um, and then secondly, just understand that it's probably decided by turn three. So just be really aggressive and lucky in the first three turns and Norse people. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the good point. Like, to be fair, to get lucky, you've got to try to get lucky. Um, so yeah, just randomise the equity, as Rick Reckless would say. You know, do some stupid things, expose the ball to get a few more hits. All the kind of idiotic plays Space Cadet does. Um, <laughs> you know, it gives you a bit of a chance, doesn't it? <laughs> chance is one way of saying it. Yeah, just don't kid yourself that you're going to sort of use advanced tactics, positional sense, thought and, uh, and control <laughs> to win. You're not. You're going to Norse people. So 2D some stuff, bang some stuff, create opportunities to high roll, as Jim says. And then uh, it'll all be fine because you're Norse. Yeah, he can base the ball here. Isn't that exciting? He can. Um, I, you know, I think he probably should as well. Yeah. I don't. I mean, I'm really caught as to what both should do here. This is Crucifer's push, so this can be stopped, and we can stop it by going through the bulls, both of them. Uh, at which point, it's just hobgoblins running away from dwarves, and that's really awful. Yeah. Basically. Or we can let him score and, and stay alive because he's not doing any damage right now. Yeah, it's really what I mean, a bad bad last turn it was from Hancock, wasn't it? To like allow this. This is so good, yeah. like getting all these guys free and he took yeah, wrapping everything around like this. It's horrible. It was it was not wide enough and a little uncommitted, yeah. a little unfocused. And now the whole. I mean, but particularly as we saw last turn that the team was sweeping left. Yeah. So to not think what happens if they try and keep doing that but do it more effectively was perhaps not ideal. Bangladesh, if you want to bash them, go with orcs. They do, they do what they, they say in the team can. 
work very well, have bleachers, have the black orcs, and they're really, really funny to play. And when they fail, they fail in a very hilarious way, so... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm looking, really looking forward to those. I think most people are. Which I think is a bit of a surprise. I think Games Workshop wanted everyone to be excited about the knobs. Um, but... <sighs> No. Oh, the classic uh, Cambridge EFI. Never do them, boys. <laughs> yeah, particularly when I think one of them needed to be dropping in as the assist on the uh, on Fermit. Yeah, but then so, uh, he's trying to know. deal with this, isn't he? That's the thing. Ah, uh, he's trying to use that with the pom piece and keep that more centralised. I think. Uh, trying to use this, he's going to one D. He's going to just one D like an idiot. And then... In fact, 1D with him first. There you go. Oh, this is not a good idea. And then 2... But shouldn't this you have 1D the other one? Just oh, freeing the bull to get yourself more out of position. Yeah. And then he's going to 1D oh. him. The Blitzra Pomber is Nigel. That's a soft target there. Oh. Oh, yeah, he is. Mm. Well, Cruz is going to get down the field now because he hasn't molested him at all, has he? He hasn't, <laughs> you know, he didn't slam into him in any way, shape, or form. He's just rolled out the red carpet. Yes, there's another reason why traditionally Hancock's been very, very careful with that blitz run. Yeah. And yeah. when he piles on and, and how exposed he lets him be. Yeah. And he knows how central he is often to uh, getting the removals he will need. Yes, exactly, Six Egg. There was no cock slamming. There really should have been. <laughs> cock should have slammed into the full. <laughs> oh, God. I, and, I mean, I'm not sure I loved the plan anyway, but when the first one in nine happened on the plus strength dwarf. Yeah. I, I think something more creative or daring needed to be tried. But I'm, I'm a little at a loss to think exactly what that was, and I think perhaps it's another case of. What should I do this turn? Well, actually, you should have coached the last turn better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's all stemming from that turn where he didn't he didn't hold the he didn't hold the edge with the tomb guardian, wasn't it? Yeah. He exposed yeah. that guy for no reason, lost him, and yeah. then the, that combined with putting him out there. See, at least if the tomb guardian was over there, wasting the blitz and it was terrible. That's where he wanted a blitz because that's where there were no tomb guardians. So he that, yeah. that turn that turn from Hancock is where all of his problems have come from. Yes, and it's it's I mean, given two turns to recognise that this was where he was going, it's really not doing that in any conceivable way. And now, oh dear, oh, oh, my oh, God. Oh, oh, dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh, but I think, uh, yeah, he's, he's fine. Regen. Regen. Oh, Absolutely oh, enormous oh. region. I could hear the ass clenching there. <laughs> yeah. Cheeks were clenched. I actually think a little bit of wee probably came out. Um, <laughs> Yeah, 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 I hear it, he was so strong that I could hear it, yes. <laughs> a burp and a fart at the same time, have you got the, uh, have you got the clip there, Dimmy? <laughs> <laughs> Hancock's uh, proudest moment, that, I think, that clip. Problem uh, with the camera is that, if the, you make a mistake in the positioning, yeah, it's very, very difficult to be able to fix it. That's true. Yes, I mean, it, you, you almost certainly can't. Um, I mean, Hancock does have the responsive pieces, but one of them isn't on the field. Uh, the other two are a bit of feared to be responsive because just the lethality of this team. It may not have enough claw to really get on top of them, the Tomb Guardians, but it's certainly got enough Mighty Blow to get on top of any skeletons. Yeah, still, there is a easy hit on the Cloud Bomber. Yeah, there's a Mighty Blow hit, which... Obviously, that's a good trade for Cruz, having one of his worst blockers on a Team Guardian, but still, um, yep. it's still Mighty Blow hit, and he might hurt him. Yeah, no, and Well, the, I mean, here uh, you've, got, uh, you've got a... The Cloud Bomber is a... Nice yes. hit on the strength four, which, sadly, we've lost our Fowler, but it's a nice hit. We've got the Pommer on the Claw Pom, and then we've got the Mighty Blow on the Guard Mighty Chorf. So it's three nice hits we can take. And you can uh, then tag the rest of the chorps available. And you can if you want. And you're putting pressure on Lucifer to score. Miles away from all of that is where the ball is, yes. 
Yeah, that's the problem. If you, if you take the claw pump hit on the claw pump hit, you're basically conceding the score, so I don't... You are, yeah. I don't know if he'll go for that or not. Well, either way, you'd put that skeleton there, either to tie it down or to assist, so we can't yeah. tell from that. Yeah, that was a nice... Yeah, it's perfect place for that, that piece. I don't go with that because... I mean, how can you reach the ball? Well, you can't, but you can perhaps put pressure on the strength bull, which again just forces him to pull back into the stall corner a bit more and maybe gets him to score the turn after next. Yeah, oh, he's going for two, it. Two, but... Yeah, get, which get, is the plan here. Get Tomb Guardians on choice and stuff. Oh, Do this. That's pretty good, isn't it? That'll help. Instant apple. That will Instant definitely apple. help. Instant well, he's got apple, two, yes, so it doesn't mean. matter what the casualty is. That was always getting an apple, wasn't it? Yeah. But now it's down to one, which is less than two. No. That, it's halfway no, to zero, Jim. <laughs> no, Mighty Blow needed. Just roll the elevens, and that's it. Sorted. Blood Bowl yeah. is easy. Just roll mm. the size of the dice with a lot of dots on them. <laughs> yes, a lot of people would have said he should have blitzed there with one of his uh, Mighty Blow, or indeed his piling on piece. But it's if you're just going to roll eleven, it. yeah, you don't need to. Just assist here, right? And assist here is pretty good because you can assist, and then, and then you know, like I don't like leaving him there. And then you, but if you one demon push him away, like that seems terrible. That's what he's been doing. But then he's free to go and do something better than what he's doing, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. Um, where I don't like is that midfield tomb guardian. I would have put him on the bull. I think 99% of the time Hancock dodges that bull off, but that's another possible one. Yeah. Uh, and if he really wants to hit it and put both chorfs into a sister bull hitting me um, without Mighty Blow, then that's fine. Then he's definitely not able to stall. Yeah. So I think that costs nothing and could gain things. Yeah, base the bull. Yeah, that bull's not hitting you. Not well. Not while I have two arms and two legs. Which is no one's ever seen me stand up on stream. I can't prove it's still true. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Fuck's sake, Chugs. <laughs> and thanks for posting that, Dimmy. It's brilliant. That, that is brilliant, that clip of, of Hancock. I, uh, I, uh, I advise everybody to watch that clip of Hancock. It's very... I mean, Chug, but there is always the chance that the Crucifer is the son of Putin. <laughs> you know, and they call that that. That turn on the blood ball too. <laughs> <laughs> keep keep Singolo in the gulag, in the blood ball gulag, another six months. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I don't like the, the, the guard Skellington just going in there. But again, look, at least if he puts in two characters. Yeah, I, I, I like supporting him somehow. But it's okay. You, like if you, if you leave him to get banged, it's either on 1D or he's putting in two players. He's leaving two players up there. Yeah. But if, you, if you're if you okay with that, then you've got to put in your mummy here to make him do this dodge as well, right? Yeah. Because then he's got to do a 1D and a dodge. I mean, it's it's a choice. You either choose to, you know, take some risks and commit things if you think it's going to pay off. But yeah, I I don't think he and I don't think Christopher would have gone for the hits. But now it looks a lot more stallable. I mean, it always was going to be, to be fair. Yeah. But I mean, you know, the plus side for Hancock is he's getting out of this half largely unscathed because yeah. of that lovely regen. There's still some time for him here to try and get on to a couple of these uh, looser players. Oh, I didn't know that guy. He shouldn't. Have, he should have followed. That was poor. That was poor, wasn't it, by by Hancock? Yeah. There was no need because to lay him free up to do that. No, that team guardian can't really go anywhere. Yeah. That, that's useful, and that did give him a two die. I mean, luckily it failed, but yeah, no, not good. Oh, he's going back to so he can punch. <sighs> Yeah, it still doesn't feel particularly relevant. <laughs> that, is a, that sums up exactly what I felt about it. Too. Uh, <laughs> I, 
I love how Crucifer left that opening there, so anything that enters there dies. <laughs> Although, to be fair, you know, in the last game, we saw a couple of ropey turns from Hancock and some incredible coaching in other times. So, I'm I'm hoping the second half sees an uptick here at the moment. I think this has not been one of his better performances to date. No. Bit of chance he's nerves. Yeah, he's a talented coach. He can get on top of this. As is a game versus Crucifer, you know, it's easy. From the armchair, you know, we're here uh, peace and quiet, but then you're playing, you have to think, you know, all the possible options. Because Crucifer is always going to take, you know, nearly the yeah. best chance you offer him. Absolutely. Uh, Steve Motti, I mean, I'd, I'd love to say yes, and I think yes is the real answer, but he's kind of, I think, for a lot of this half, been caught between the two stools of trying to put a bit of pressure on whilst trying to go for attrition. Yeah. And I frankly, think more neither than has a, really worked at all. More than more attrition. trying to protect his players, isn't exactly. he? Exactly, protect his yeah. players. Yeah. Mm. He it's been a very gone, defensive, defensive drive. Yeah, he hasn't gone balls out pumming every turn. Like, you know, he hasn't he hasn't nope. uh, seen goal or did or uh, whoever the other one was that we just saw. And plenty of turns where he hasn't based um, with his stronger ball. pieces when he perhaps could have done. Yeah. Uh, and now, interestingly, he has based quite a few when it seems too late in the drive for it to achieve very much. But it might still give him two turns back, and he has got a very, very fast piece for Kemri. Still, that AG4 is going to get hit, but maybe. Yeah. Yeah, what else to bleed? I mean, I think as Crucifer, you score here, don't you? You don't really need to mess about. No, oh, but you're scared of the two turn. He's got an edge four throw round and move seven. He could just score two turns. No, he probably. Yeah, but you've got two bulls. No, no, yeah. This, this, this move, and this move here, more or less means he's gonna try yes. to. Yes. Yeah, he's scoring. Just score. Just get the safe hits. Get the kill a mummy for a uh, tomb guardian first, and then pop it in. Very similar to a <laughs> re reckless evening. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go, and that Hog Goblin gets a level. Which you know when Crucifer and his Hog Goblins is going to probably be, be at least a G or a, or a strength. Um, you say that red hair, but neither of these guys, this is only the quarterfinal. <laughs> Well, I'm technically, technically, I'm playing here, you know, I have a player in the, with my name on Crucifer's team, so... That's true, yeah. Faimir is here as the, as the most expendable job. <laughs> the most expendable job. <laughs> so that means also the one that has more chances to survive, because no resources are going to be spent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, he doesn't want you to, to, he doesn't care if you live or die, but also neither does Hancock. No one really cares about you at all. <laughs> That's good. That's like it. That feels so much like my life. <laughs> Utterly irrelevant to this entire game from everyone's point of view. <laughs> I mean, that's definitely that's what the best you thing you can in, say in about a blue ball player. Yeah, that's what I you think, want if you're a blue ball player, isn't it? The last thing you want. I to think probably the hobgoblins are of more use to Crucifer right now. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, no, 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 no doubt, no doubt, no doubt with that. But mm. I have to remind you, the players that are sitting in the bench, all the cap. When their team wins, they also become cup champions in football, basketball, or any sport, you know? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's Doctor, hang on, but are you, of, uh, of are you being offended at my treatment of Fermia? Because <laughs> if that's what you're wowing, when you absolutely get away, let me get away with a murder, rape, and necrophilia joke at the expense of Rick Reckless, <laughs> then your standards are very, very weird. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the thing um, is, yeah, I don't know if it, I don't know if you can call that one a joke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, popular BB theme and assumption. Also, part of my job here, besides being a useless uh, LOS uh, piece of meat, is encourage Polar's wife to enter into action, so uh, you know Polar can they can finally have the baby they're looking for. Ah, fantastic. 
Yeah, so my advice to Progler is let's go champ, let's go champ. <laughs> Ah, uh, well, perhaps Hancock is re is deliberately throwing this game. He doesn't want to appear too attractive to Mrs. Hancock. Yeah, this is Chase Cam. We're in Chase Cam uh, Twitch or GN1. Um, the idea is, you know, the camera behind whoever's driving is. So, yeah, this is Chase Cam. So we followed, we were behind Cruz for Cruz's drive, and now we're behind the Camry for the Camry drive. There you go. Just like watching it on TV. Yeah, and resolutely neutral in our commentary. Yes, completely neutral. Yeah, in this case, yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I like Hancock a lot, but I have nothing against Cruz for, and they're both. Yeah, I think if coaching. Hancock managed to win the challenge with his Camry team, that would be absolutely epic. Oh, it's and a beautiful they... Camry team, and yeah, was oh, so good, so good. Oh, there are far worse coaches that have won Chalice, even within my limited time in BB2, so that wouldn't be in any way shocking or or surprising. Uh, yes, Jamba Tight, you risk everything on the two turn here, because you win the game if you get it almost, don't you? Yep. That's it. You, I mean, uh, yeah. no doubt, balls to the wall to turn here. You have the players. Or once in a lifetime, I can redeem as the players to be able to pull off a two-time. Yeah, and it's got the two rerolls, so you can, you know, but do your solid stuff first and then start to take a few chances even. But he's done this, um, which I don't understand oh. at all. You blitz up the middle. Oh, but you have to, don't you? You're getting 3D here. And you blitz you blitz that dude. <laughs> if you're blitzing up the side, then Surely the pieces up the side should be placed to take advantage of the blitz up the side, which they don't seem to be. This was terrible, wasn't it? It is was genu genuinely terrible here. No offence to Hancock. But this guy could have been pushed to there. Then you could have blitzed this guy who doesn't have stand firm. What well, can I say? I'm a stun. He's got a hole a anyway. But he could yeah. have had a gaping hole. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it does mean he's attacking on two fronts, which is great. But he could have had a gaping hole. It could have been wide open. There's one thing I like to see in <laughs> Blood Bowl, it's a gaping hole. A nice cloaca, real for action. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh dear. Now Just he has ball. tied up all the chorfs. You can uh, catch like a mongoose, though. Apart from the one right out on the far side, which is marginalized away from his two scoring threats. So, his one scoring threat. I'm presuming the other one is going to come around behind the strength six and uh, become a second scoring threat. Yep. But um, you may notice there's a couple of pieces he hasn't really dealt with. <laughs> is it the ball um, centaurs? It is the ball centaurs. Could be the, you yeah. know, the movement nine play. Oh, is so, it the... yeah, knew, knew someone of your experience would have spotted that by now, yeah. Yeah, is, 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 um, is it the guys who dodge on a 2 plus and move up to 9 squares yeah. and are strength 4 and 5? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's that. Yeah. They're, they're both also, just I want to point that out, um, they are both also guard pieces mm. that can go anywhere on this field and hit anything. Mm. But, you know, you've got to do something, and this is the something he's doing, <laughs> and it is it is something. Yeah. He has done something. Yeah. Well, um, he, he could have done the blitz. I said try where you, where you uh, where you come in and you hit this guy, and then you've got him on him, and then you can, you can almost kind of like you, you know try, try and flood through the center of the field yeah. with uh, yeah some tomb guardians. You try and at least tie one bull up, but even then it's a two plus to go anywhere, so it's probably not worth it. I mean Hancock. I mean I'm joking about it, obviously, but Hancock's done probably the best you can do. Tie up all the dwarfs so that they can't move around. He has to face him. Try and marginalise some pieces and he's done that with at least one dwarf. Try and get some scoring threats through and he's actually got three. The bulls can only take out one, mark the others. That's great. That's great for Kemri. So oh, it's a good turn. I don't like that though. I much preferred basing the bull. I guess you can two plus away but then... <sighs> he yeah. can base the bull range? with the two bulls, yes. You're in range there. You can tag the bull and then one, two, three, four, five, six. You're still in range, right? So you could have tagged the bull there. So if the bull dodges away, well, then you've got a, you, you're still yeah. a scoring threat. I quite, I quite like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't hate that. 
Because now he can blitz with one and then base with the other, can't he? Yes. Well, and possibly blitz with one and then base both the other pieces with a yeah. bull each. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, I mean, what he has done with. that's really nice is that none of them can be blitzed onto something else. So that yes. on a push, they're not based with anything else. Yes. Uh, and even if they're knocked over, they should mostly, depending exactly how he does it, be able to get up and be of use. Um, so it is, it's a really nice turn from Hancock. I similarly didn't like how he set up for it. I would have set up differently, but the outcome is undeniable. It's a really strong position he's put himself into. Yeah. He can't hit no, that or he could base it, but obviously he's got no. control, so he could just... Yeah, the strength four bull can base it very easily without anything being rolled except his three go for it's covered by sure feet. But as Jim says, the, the AG4 then just dodges out backwards. It makes the throw two squares then, longer. Yeah, you are making. If that's ruinous, you can do a three plus two plus instead of a two plus. You are making yeah, you are making three rolls to make your opponent make one extra roll. So yeah, they, exactly. Yeah. And, and most that rolls. importantly, not using him to blitz this dude right now that he's what he's yeah. which is what he's doing. Yeah. Ooh. Yep, no re-roll. I knew he wouldn't. Yeah, that's tough dice. I mean, Cruz has got three re-rolls, Jim. What, what in your mind do you think he thinks they're for? Yeah, he's going to 1D this. Uh, he's going to GFI there, which he's done, and he's going to 1D this. Uh, well, uphill this. Uh, he's going to 1D him, and he's going to uphill this guy. He's going to uphill the strength six. To try and right, get yep. strength four, to, to free so. another chore to drop it on one of the scoring threats. Of course he is, I would too. There you go, gets the yeah, pal as well. There you go, gets the pals. Is the dead here? This is how uh, uh, Strength 6 dies? No. No, it isn't. Not yet. Oh, wait. Not yet. Still Oof. not dead. If anyone <laughs> in chat is isn't surprised by that, you've not... Yeah, exactly. I'm with you for a minute. The people that are surpri aren't surprised by that just haven't watched enough bloody I mean, football, have they? Red dies into pause is always dead. Always dead. What the hell is happening here? Ooh. Now, because it isn't even an armor break, he suddenly realized he, the dwarf he's freed has to stay yes. on that Tomb Guardian. Yeah. So that was a win and a loss there for Crucifer. He's got this dodge as well. So yeah, he had the dodge available for all these dodges and GFIs and uphills. So, yeah, know. no, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I just always feel if you get to the end of a half with three rerolls, but then he's he's scored. He just doesn't need them, has he? Yeah, he has yeah. Been. It's not like there's been any crazy play or anything that actually needed. No, he, he did greed a reroll. He, he did greed a reroll. He did one as well. He did. Yeah. yeah, the only one he's used was that, and he got that back, didn't he, in a kickoff mm -hmm. event? And the bull two pluses have all worked when he's used them. So yeah, it's all been all been nice dice. But the strength for a uh, chorf. Instead of tagging the strength six, could be one square higher, tagging the and still will help, you know, in case the the bleach or anything. The no, because if it, if it is, then you can uh, the, if you yeah you can put a tomb guardian into the square and close that set of four, and then use the strength to knock the um, chorf over and push the bull off giving you a free target oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. To... so you need to stay on the Tomb Guardian where he is yeah yeah, yeah that's the thing he could, that, he that's, could that's, high, that's high level uh, coaching there gentlemen I mean, it's, it's, that it's, that. it's not easy to get there but it is possible and now that he's done that for example the Tomb Guardian at the back can do it on two go for it could drop into that square making it a foursome just in front of the the bull yeah, and yeah. free the and then the strength six on a single go for it knocks over the strength four frees the hobgoblin uh, the skeleton of both he's tackles. He's seen it. He's seen it. He's doing it. He's loving it. Is this even Here a three D as well? It is. It's going to be a three D to make it even nicer. Yeah. Here we go. Beautiful move. Here we go. Beautiful. Ends it around the corner. Poetry, poetry movement here. Doesn't get the pal. Classic. Oh, you see, sometimes you do something good and you should be rewarded. But here he really isn't being. It's a lovely, lovely move. Ah, uh, there you go. Gets the reroll. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it, it now means he's catching in no tackle zones, ready to score. That's It's beautiful. You still just got to get the ball to him. Yeah, yeah he had to reroll that, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it makes the catch easier and saves a dodge. It, can it's better to use it there. Can we pass to score? That's, this is how I 
bid uh, Jimmy when we played. He can do <laughs> the pass. He's agility four. It's the catch that's going to be, what, a four? Yeah. 40, uh, 50%. 50%. I wonder, if the, five, I wonder if the six, GFI six. is still worth it with pass. That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, that is interesting. It might not be worth it. No, I don't think it is. I think the 5 plus with I, pass I is probably it. better than the 4 plus, isn't it? Oh, sorry, the 4 plus with pass is probably better than the 3 plus. Yeah. After two twos. Let's have a look. Because he hasn't got a re-roll on the twos. I think it probably is without doing the Samba. Oh! Wow. Not if you roll like that. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, that isn't. That isn't good enough. Don't do that. Oh, well. I mean, it was a difficult play anyway, so good, very good effort by Hancock to be able to reach that point. Yeah. So it was, with a GFI, you're 60, yeah, you're 37%. With the, with the GFI. The GFI is 37% and the 4 plus pass is 37.5%. So yeah, the, the non-GFI was correct. Yeah, it, I mean, you can take the catch and out, can't you? Because that's the same in both. So uh, Firion did it for us with just the 2-2-3 two, two, plus reroll and the 4 plus reroll and the 4 plus reroll comes out. That way, a big chunky amount better. Uh, was, there wasn't two two pluses. Uh, because it was there's, plus. yeah. <laughs> no, it was two two. It was a it was two two pluses to get into no, the three plus one. range. It was one. It was one. It was one. I think. Was it? I thought it was two. It was one. <laughs> but it failed. If it was two two pluses, then I wouldn't have thought about it. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that comes out at thirty-seven and thirty-seven and a half, doesn't it? Because the yep. the, the four plus just halves, just halves that. Yes, of course. If it was one, it was still better. That's what. That's what I. Yes, I worked exactly. Out the one plus. The, the one. The one was interesting. The two was was an obvious. Oh, it, the two was obvious that it was worse. But yes, it might have worked had he done the two plus. Yes, that with the uh, way yeah. the dice fell. But of course, all you can do is make decisions based on the odds and make analysis based on the odds, not what's actually happened. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know how they work in cyanide, uh, whether there is just a chain of dice and you pull them out of that chain one at a time for whatever happens next. I read by cyanide saying that uh, they use an algorithm that actually uses the square where the player is to add some extra randomness to the yeah, dice. which... I choose to believe, which means that every roll is independent of any other yes. roll, and the, swapping the an action for of a different dice. action does not mean the same dice would happen. That happened. That was how Blood Bowl One worked. Yes, um, and so someone hacked the chain so they could read it. Yeah, so they were just making <laughs> random moves, <laughs> randomly move this guy over here, and now I'll do the, now I'll do this two dice block, and oh, I've killed your guy. <laughs> Yeah. Plus, the only sane way to think about it is to decide that if you do one thing instead of another thing, then the four wouldn't have been a four because the other thing is another thing. It's a different world, a different timeline. Yeah, but I mean, otherwise you go crazy. Says, you constantly second guess yourself. Yeah, ev everyone just says that though, don't they? Like you know, when you when you roll a thing and you roll the thing, you're like, oh, I should have done that. You know, like it's just a stupid human thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's not really yeah. a serious. It's good. Yeah, analysis. it's good for the jokes. Good. I mean, I just I don't want anyone to think it is. <laughs> Right. So, oh, it's the touchback. That's pretty good. Yeah, he could have done that. Usually here is, yeah, he's chosen it. You always choose his uh, fast piece. I think that's the right option here because it gives the AG4 as a handoff choice, yep. meaning he can run him out, meaning Crucifer has all sorts of different worries, both to worry about the main ball carrier and the obvious handoff option. Yeah, and um, Hobgoblin's on the LOS here. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. This dirty player could get taken out instantly. And then Hancock is free to pom with impunity. And there's enough mighty blow that you've got to think they're going to take some proper hits, these hobgobs. Okay. It's not like he's facing elves or something where but you might expect to there lose you go. Yeah, he didn't pom yeah. that one, but he did 3D him. Not a shock. I mean, I think that's about what I'd have been hoping for here. One of the two hoggobs gone, so anything from here is a bit of a, you know, bonus territory. 
They were on the line for the two turn as well, Chambertin, but on the two turn, first of all, it's a two turn. And second of all, so like, because you're trying to two turn, you don't really. Oh, look, he could have made that <laughs> 3D. He could have made that 3D, and he's got to be kicking himself. He just yep. needed to put one, one more on. assist. When he's got plenty of skeletons without a big plan this turn. Yeah, yeah. Um. Now every skeleton he moves from now, well, one. <laughs> yes, but he could have also moved them in differently before. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the thing. When he's doing the two turn, like he needs those pommers to go and run down the field and do stuff, don't they? Um, but he doesn't, you know, in this time, now he doesn't, so now he's definitely going to tee up on the LOS. Yes, it's about priorities. I mean, this turn, for example, he could have set up to do diagonal blocking, meaning that each one of those could have been hit, you know, multiple times in case of pushes. Yes. Uh, he could set up much more easily to palm and not care about that lack of movement, that lack of control. Yes. So it's just, it's a riskier turn to set things up. Though, yes, you're right, there was some risk on the turn six kickoff. Yeah. A lot more, a lot more on the t uh, turn six. You you can't, you can't realistically set every, set up to hit everything, can you? So, yeah. um, don't re rerolls do not reset in overtime. No, Rida. no, no. Uh, they uh, yeah, the rerolls that they now have will carry them through to the end of overtime if we see overtime, and through the kicks uh, if that's how far we get. If the end of overtime is of course a draw, we get the thrilling excitement of watching all of the row rerolls they have. Uh, give us an animation of a kick going over the bar before it then decides who gets to win randomly on a d6. Yeah. And if it's a five versus a six, we could be watching uh, 11 penalty kicks before we know the result. Yeah. Uh, a really thrilling outcome that we can all look forward to. Absolutely. Hyper exciting. Exactly. Uh, basically, also okay, rid of. Yeah, these rerolls are all they get till the end of the game. Yeah, <laughs> that's that, that's the main thing that I like the app over over babes for is even with two babes, right? You can actually just use the you can actually use the apple here to, to keep your care on the field, can't you? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, the only time I really like babes is AV seven. Yeah, I think then you can get to the point. I mean, more often than you do with other teams, where you've got a really full KO box and you want to get lots of them back. But against, if anything that stays even a bit, then I often find a second Apo is, as you said, it's just it's a more accurate tool still to solve KOs with often. Yeah, and obviously regen because egos are terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah absolutely, Shambatan. Yeah, lots of AV7 thralls. You need them to get back on the field. They're completely disposable. You just need them. You don't care which ones. It's the perfect time for babes. Yeah. Yeah, armor seven, armor seven is really cool, but who the hell would use armor seventeens? Disgusterous. Well, self harmers, Jim. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know the world is full of these sorts of people. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Sad people, you know. you know. And those sort of eternal optimists that still believe in fairies and <laughs> trickle down economics and all of that sort of nonsense, mm. you know. Oh, I've heard those kind of people play storybook brawl. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I was uh, grabbing a cannon. What happened in the uh, Crucifer Star 9? He blitzed and then his, his bull sent or ran forward two squares, hit, ran back two squares. Right, uh, Ritter look to pick. You're definitely on the wrong stream. You need to seek out somebody <laughs> called Space Cadet <laughs> and, yeah. and live by his teachings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You may have found your Jesus. <laughs> but bear in mind what you consider random shit, he's going to decry as quite ordinary and unexceptional. Fuck off, Dimmy. And then do some stiff stuff that you're going to go, well, that's just mad. <laughs> and then beat Jim doing it. So it, it's, yep. it's an odd experience watching space. <laughs> yes, it is. I've watched him play about nine times. Uh, well, no, about eight times I've watched him play. And uh, I've had a game against him. The odd, probably two games against him. <laughs> I've probably had two games against him. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. watch him couple, play. A couple more than that, Jim. Times. No, no, yeah. I've only played a couple of games. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see. <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then watched him play. 
<laughs> I, mean, I really <laughs> like Space Cadet. I really do. But I, I, I can't be on his stream for longer than about 20 minutes. <laughs> Neither have I, ever have I ever seen someone so consistently and convincingly wrong about so many things. <laughs> That's great, isn't My it? My experience is such a Space Cadet. Oh. <laughs> it's basically enter the stream thinking, oh, he's having a bad day. I better come back uh, some, uh, the, some other time. And then the next time I try to enter the stream, oh, he's yeah. having a bad day. He's still Maybe, having you know, a bad come day. come at another yeah. time because when he's not screaming. And that's been every single time. Yeah. The hilarious thing is when I beat when I beat him, right? When I, when I beat Space, I had a 10.50 Orc team and he had a 12.80 Necro team and I beat him 3-0. <laughs> <laughs> so like, how do you even win 3 0 as well? <laughs> Must have diced the pants off him. Uh, Did you drop the Vetus Gerolitis quote? No, no, that was, that was the second time I played him. Ah. Uh, uh, and that was before the great. the great misery. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, one of those was Norse versus Flings, so. you'd expect that, wouldn't you? I mean, you, you do know the legendary Vetus Gerolite is quite possibly the best thing anyone in sports has ever said. Yes, yeah, go on. Yeah. Do, do it again, PC. I know well, you yeah. I mean, he uh, famously had a lot of games against Jimmy Connors. And in their 17th meeting, after 16 losses, he finally beat Jimmy Connors. At the press conference afterwards, he sat down and he said, let this be a lesson to you. No one beats Vetus Gerolite 17 times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Words we should all live by. Yeah. Yeah, space is my kryptonite. Yeah. <laughs> oh, having to go. say, having said that, I also have to say that the uh, space as is public, he knows how to do his streams. But Interesting not, for that people, yeah. and they enjoy it, and uh, you know he leaves the character until the last uh, consequence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. kidding. I, I love Space Cadet. I do really find him entertaining, but I just end up arguing with him, and that's not great for anyone. Oh no, no. You have to, you have to realize that he's completely and utterly insane. Also, now that I've realized, if you if you've seen the if you've seen the uh, the TV series, uh, that thing that happened in Russia with the. Uh, <laughs> with the nuclear thing. Oh, Chernobyl. Chernobyl. Yeah, if you've seen the TV series Chernobyl, then, then, uh, then Space Cadet just is Dyatlov. 100%. It's just 100%. It's Space Cadet. It's insane. It's just 100% Space Cadet. Glorious. Glorious. So good. And if you haven't seen it, then I'm, I can't explain it to you. But you should watch it because it's a great series. And also, Dyatlov is Space Cadet. He even looks like Space Cadet, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Reminds me of the... I mean, are you like me, Jimmy? You're a bit disappointed. It's been nearly 30 years now since Chernobyl. And still no superheroes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's in on fact, Netflix, I can't remember what it came out. In fact, the PC has been 35 years since wow. Chernobyl. Wow. wow. And I still won't buy Ukrainian trousers because, you know, Chernobyl fallout. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for that funky green glow in your parts. <laughs> Yeah, he looks like he does. He does look like him. It's genuine. I'm not even like taking the piss or anything. He genuinely looks like him. <laughs> it's amazing. It's also it's an amazing show. So yeah, really, really good. Yeah, great show. Great performance by the actor who plays Dyatlov. Yeah, it is. It's a fabulous piece of drama. Yeah. Speaking of drama, um, I mean, I quite like what we've got here. The the Chorfs have got a nice, solid defensive wall up. But uh, you know, Hancock is uh, boxing clever in front of it, looking for space. I doubt Cruz was going to give him the space that Hancock gave him. No, so he might easy. have to try and manufacture it somehow. He will fight tooth and nail here because, you know, what you really want with a chorfs, isn't it, is you just want to keep the people in front of you. Keep hold the middle, and then if they make a break, you've got your bulls to uh, be absolute potato peelers, aren't they? They are the, the yeah, best so weapon you, you, against a potato. You, can you cannot them. potato against bulls. You just can't. So you've got to create the space, you've got to push forward. Um, and Toon Guardians, of course, are so slow that because you really need to bring them against the Bulls, 
it means you've got to get going really early, sort of this turn or next. We need to see some movement forwards. Yeah, 100%. Now, the fact that that skeleton has advanced uh, and that the first hit has worked makes me think we're seeing a blitz on the ball here. Yeah. Yeah. Doing it around the corner, try and keep that side clear. Clearly, that's where he wants the ball to go. Eesh. A push. Take it. Take it. That is a. Yeah. Uh... You can't. You can't. He's only got two re rolls. He can't yeah, read that. Yeah. Uh... No, you can't. And if you knock it over, it's just dodging off anyway. So it's not massively different to push and advance onto it. That is a I don't know what you're talking about there, Ridder. That must be a different show. Because it's definitely, definitely not. It was definitely an Englishman. <laughs> He's dead now, I think, funnily enough. Well, not really funnily, but, you know, there you go. Now, choosing not to stay on the strength of five ball, which I think could have been, you know, reinforced to the point again where it was tricky for it to get some hits in. But I, I get why. Has created a pocket. Yeah. Yeah. I like the X cage holding it on the corner. <laughs> like, it works, doesn't it? Like, I'm not just taking the piss. That it works Well, against well. break tackle, it's it's a very solid line, isn't it? Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's two, two dodges to get there. Yeah. As long as you close the back door, which yeah, I have a feeling um, he will. He's doing right now. I would have maybe he's liked this guy over here, but yeah, it's still I think nothing. that I think it's a bit of a nothing position for him, Jim. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, I either think you could have pushed it in front of the bull and marked the two down chorps and the hobgob all at once. I quite like that position. Um, because it would cut, you know, the whole half of the team off and demand hitting with one of the bulls. Um, I mean, it puts him at risk, of course, but only from a mighty blow. I think you've got to be able to take that sort of hit. Whereas now, there's a lot of this team that might be able to get back involved in stopping this drive. And I'd like to have tied a few more of them down. Yep. But, I mean, that's said, Hancock's got this far by keeping the team, you know, alive and looking aggressive and using it sparingly but well, so... But now he's split think... his team, he's left the green yeah. fellas behind. I just think the Bulls are just too powerful to... If they have any support with them, they can do wonders. Without support, they can still do it, but it's tougher. It's only one Tomb Guardian, though. Let's celebrate the positive, and it has at the moment tied up, tied up the plus strength chorf. So, yeah, it's, there's, there's a lot of good here. It's not that bad. Actually, I think it's a decent exchange. Yeah, so of course, Cruz comes in there. Yeah. Blitz in there to, to it leave. Leave these guys abandoned more, isn't it? Yeah. Very good play from Cruz. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. He does play very well. He really does. And now when the strength four takes its hit, he can recover another chorf. Yep. I mean, you, you knock over the guard skeleton first. Wow, fiction. Wow. Time to nerf your wrestling. All right, fiction, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, Fiction. Shouldn't he have hit the uh, other guy first? Shouldn't he have hit this first? Yeah, he first? should have done. Absolutely, he should have done. Um, and in a in a world where he thinks he's in more trouble than he thinks he's in, sort of the trouble I think he's in, uh, he should have hit the other guy first and then tried the one die just to move the mummy and recover the strength four because it's a better piece. So I don't love what he did then. Mm. Oh, do you know what? Maybe maybe that is why he didn't do the, the other hit first. No, I don't know. I don't know. Well, because if that was a push, Jim, <laughs> then he doesn't have that two die on the skeleton at the end. Yeah, I know. And a one die could free that tomb guardian. And if the other skeleton stands up, it might even have been a two die. But you could have pushed him in and followed and then hit. Yeah, the claw, okay. But then you don't want to have to do that, so... 
But then would it have been okay to just leave him stranded on there? Like maybe he didn't mind, but yeah, I think he should have hit first. And he's got the four re-rolls. I would have done the other hit first, then hit the one die with the claw, re-rolling if needs be, and then run the strength four piece off, back because it helps the bulls a lot more. Yeah. But that's me. I mean, you know, Chris was very, very good with chaffs. I just, I'm not sure he's got quite enough back to stop these Kemri if they get a reasonable turn this turn. Yeah, yeah that's that's a fair point by Tri, but I don't in that way, the only result that mattered was freeing the chaff, so at least this way, you know, imagine if you dub skull on the other one, then you've got to re-roll it, and you're like, why didn't I do the other one first, and, you know, so I guess, yeah. Fair <laughs> All my jokes went over his head. <laughs> Thanks, this is Fymir. This is Fymir. He's been here for about a month. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Robino, I had to read it twice, but that was good. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you find I missed sort of... one game. I missed one game, and then everybody forgets about me. Yeah. Did you find he kind of knew what you were going to say before you even did the joke? What's that? It's Skuro doing this gym. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. You need to wrestle if I may. You need to uh, you need to send me a picture yes, of Yes, your, I need of to, your face. yes, 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 oh. I need to I have to send you the photo. I'll do it uh, this week. Glorious. Now Hancock actually has a scoring thread. Does he? Yeah. The Blitz Ra two in front of the ball carrier is in range. Yeah. Um and it's only a four plus with re roll and then two go for its. It's, it's doable. He could score this turn if he wants to. He has actually left the plus move and the agility both one step out of range. And I don't think he really wants to score. Um, but if you look at those two Toon Guardians at the back, look how they've been effectively dealt with and tied up. Yep. And even if they'd done good things, they still wouldn't have been much use. He just hasn't got enough at the front to really convince me that he can push this cage forward and get it into a better position. Yep. And three Which is why I mentioned here. his scoring, his scoring possibility. Yeah, no, it's a good, it's a good chance. He's he's fucked over here now, isn't he? Without yeah, Chris put left him three on two. He split his team. Maybe he tries yeah. to come back, but if he tries to come back, then all of a sudden he's only got three turns. And how does he score at all? Yeah, mm. exactly. I mean, I think fucked is the technical term. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it, this is all awful right now. Yeah. Um, but as I said, it, it, it kind of is solvable. <laughs> Fucking hell, Jay, fine. You're running out of time. <laughs> or you can just panic a bit and run out of time. Yeah, he's come oh, out of time. Yeah, he's just going to have to run the ball away now. Oh, he's going for it. He's going for no, it. He is going sword. for the play I call. It's the one die to oh, move him. It no, he's using Andy. reds because it's a plus strength. Yeah, there was oh, a God. slightly easier way of doing it, but never mind. He's got it done now. It's a four plus two plus two plus naked. That can't be done. In zero seconds. Now you have to run backwards, don't you? I don't, I don't think he could have won D there. He hasn't got anyone free, has he? Was... Um, I was looking at blitzing the Tomb Guardian off, running it around the corner, using that for the assist and knocking off with the bull that's currently marking the thing so that'd be a minus one plus three two three four five yeah i was getting a one die but if it was a push it was into the wrong place right and so you I needed the power to stand firm guy yeah i needed a pow a go for it and then a five plus right but with the option of running away if it all failed and then another pow ran out <laughs> of time for. yeah yeah no, so the five the... plus was the five plus was the pow right yeah 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 okay that, oh, yeah. that's a lot of work a pow on two die a two plus and then a power on one day. It's a lot of work, I, I think. It is, but it, I mean, it, it, if it worked, then, and I still had the reroll, then a 4 2 2 and score looks sexy. And if it doesn't work, I've still got a nice wall in front of my ball carrier who can then retreat. Yeah, it'd be a very good ending spot for the, for the uh, stand firm. Yeah. Uh, Tomb Guardian. Yeah, so I've taken space, you know, and I've got a good spot. And I think the ball carrier could probably stay there, but might still have to retreat it. But it didn't happen. I mean, it's it's not terrible right now. I mean, it's not great, but... <laughs> Fucking hell, <LGFI. laughs> mm. uh, If you were Crucifer, would you... I mean, I, I would take this two die on the uh, skeleton just in front of the strength four bull. And if that's a pow, then I would do this 
a break tackle, but he's just settling for control, which, you know, because he's 1 0 up, I suppose he's fine. He generally does cruise. I've noticed, uh, like, you know, I haven't watched the most amount of cruise, to be fair, in my in my lifetime. I haven't, I haven't, you know, it's, I mostly, I mostly watch Elliot when I'm not playing myself, um, and obviously I've played myself a, a fair amount, so that's the main yeah. reason why I don't watch many people. Um, sometimes PC after after a stream, PC's on sometimes, and Elliot before, oh. but then the rest of the time I'm just streaming myself. So I haven't seen a lot of Chris until doing these replays and and live ones, like until the ch these chalice casts. And he is very, very, very safe in general. I think yeah, he's very, very controlled play. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there was uh, one die on the ball with the was the hobo three plus and that's yeah. it, but. No need to risk to risk it. No, you're absolutely right. With a wrestle around the back, that was mm -hmm. definitely there. And as I said, there was you know if you got a, a pow on a two die on a naked hobgob, then there was a two plus for two die on it with the bull, the strength five bull. Mm -hmm. uh, no, sorry, that would be a three plus, wouldn't it? Because it was into two tackle zones. Um, so there were lots of chances for ball hits that he has turned down. But I mean, look at the lovely controlled position he's got instead. Gonna come in here for the assist. Yep. And now he's gonna have a free a free wrestler in the backfield. Maybe free. Yeah. I don't love this position. I didn't like the follow. -up. Gives you a uh, two D, but it's with a skillless uh, chorp, so um oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, isn't there Yes, because Fermir doesn't have guard. Nope. Then the one next to the strength six can, if it gets a pow, can free up the strength six. And if not, the other tomb guard, he can have a go. And if the strength six is freed up, surely it can blitz the hobgoblin off in front of the ball carrier, who can then dodge off and score. Oh no, he can't score. He's one short still. Yeah, he's one, he's one short. Uh, uh, that's not so great then. Because you can't potato against bulls and expect it to work. No, you can't. Um, yeah. When stand firm works, it's just cruel, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's so annoying. Oh yes. You take you take stand firm and you guys get knocked down every single hit and then yeah. you go against stand firm and all you can do is fucking roll pushes <laughs> every fucking time. <laughs> yeah, stand firm Crocs in one of the two evil lizard games I played yesterday uh, took ten dice one turn. <laughs> Didn't have block. Ten dice. All pushes or skulls. Oh, and he hit with the fucking other guy. Oh, that's sorry, because he had three dice, so he hasn't freed anyone up. Oh, dear. Yeah, but the problem with that is it, it doesn't create any movement, Jim. Yeah, he, he had to he had to free up the, the tomb he didn't he? I didn't like that yeah. 3D. No. I think one way or another you had to create some movement, and he just hasn't done that. I mean, he's got the agility piece that can dodge off, and he could perhaps hand off to it, but it's these are some bleak chances now. I mean, maybe if this had worked, he'd have created some space to get through the middle, but there's just too many dorks there. Whee. Oh, I think that's the palm of a beaten man, though. It wasn't it just, yeah. That's... Then he rolls <laughs> Isn't that depressing? Nice ATV investment, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he gets the power, yeah. Okay, so now we have... I mean, we're going to have to potato it, aren't we? And just potato and hope. Yep. It might be enough, though, right? It might be. I mean, there is a skeleton behind these dwarfs, and if the Chaos Dwarf blocker somehow doesn't knock that skeleton over or move it so that the bull can dodge out on a two... <laughs> um, there is no need for the dodge. Then there's a chance this doesn't get knocked over. Because now good. there is a chain, you can chain the bull free. Yeah, you take. Yes. You have to take the one die on the dwarf, don't you? Uphill. No. Yeah, yeah you, you can't because. Yeah, like you have to. 
Even if you push, then the bull can actually dodge out easier on a push. Oh, with well, the mummy, yeah. Okay. But, yeah, the chain is brutal. You just need to push on it, and it's a two plus. Oh, no, he's done the dodge. He could have chained the bull free. Well, I yeah. could have done just yeah. punch and then hit him, and then the ball's free. And you have the string with the five you bull free. You lunatic try. <laughs> oh, he's done firm. Ah! Yeah, but you could have Free the string, the chain free, the string with five bull. Yeah. You know, pushing one up. Yeah. yeah. And there is just ping. Yeah. All yeah, right. just, exactly. And at the same time, just moving it allows the other bull to dodge out on a two. So it, yeah. if it stayed there, it was definitely worse. Dodging wasn't my preferred choice, but something had to get done. I mean, as it is, that bull still dodges out on a two, as it does. Oh, took all four, but he did get the pal. Armor break. And the armor break. And the pickup. And the pickup. And the pickup effectively ends the game. And we've come to the end of the line. Yeah. I mean, there's some ludicrous shots that could work here, but they're not going to. So that's it. Ripperoni. And uh, 15, yeah. It was a good effort from Cock. And now, well, well, let's not talk about the semi-finals until after this, because people might not be watching them out of yep. order on the YouTubes. No, that's why, since we started recording, I have not mentioned what has happened in the other semis. Brilliant. Though we all know. Yes. In the other quarterfinals. As, uh, the other yes. quarters, yes. To make the lineup of the semis. Yep, great run by Hancock, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he's coached the hell out of this team at times. Got some great results. Uh, what a beautiful Camry team. But brought low by this... Um, I mean, re I don't want to say it's completely unexceptional. This is a very good Chorv team. It's just not quite as good as some of the other ones that Cruz was bought. Yeah, but I mean, but. I mean, he's brought, he's brought, he's brought about fucking eighty of them, hasn't he? <laughs> you know, so like, maybe he's yeah. maybe he's one hundred and twenty. Pretty much every single season, he's qualified or double qualified with Crow. You know, like he's 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 qualified, then made a second team just to get a better team. And you know what I mean? Like Cruz is yeah. Cruz is qualified as Chov so many times, and he's made some. This is still a great Cruz team. Oh, the only thing he's missing is a started hobble. Apart from yeah. that, it's great. Yeah, it's a better ball carrier, and maybe one more claw is what you'd want to add to this, really, isn't it? Yeah. At least dodge, if not a stat up on one of the hobs. Yeah, I think a stat hop is the only thing that's making this not completely incredible. Like, it's still great. Strength up, strength up chalk is the absolute dream. Strength up bull is the absolute dream. So, like, that's yeah, too... Yeah, that's, that's fair. That's two incredible things. Obviously, yeah, not having panning on the claw mate is a bit shit. But at the end of the day, Chovs don't even need the pylon that much anyway, right? The pylon's no, really only, for the, only for the dwar uh, only for the orcs and chaos, really, and Nurgle is what yep. they need. The claw yep. Against. And when you're already massively snowballing someone, uh, it gets you even more SPP. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I wish that was true, Sick, but actually, he's on his stream. He seems like quite a nice chap. Very mellow, very calm, very quiet. Very very conservative of nature, it would seem, as well as in his play. Um, but he doesn't come over as, you know, difficult or arrogant or horrible in any way. I mean, he's, he's Lucifer, sometimes but... when he gets flack, it's from people that they doesn't know him or haven't him, uh, seen him uh, streaming or anything. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it actually, the guy is a very nice uh, guy, very gentle, yes. very nice. Yeah, exactly. Really, I mean, not, I mean, uh, not what some thinks of sometimes as the stereotype of Russians. Um, <laughs> All the stereotypical chaff coach and stereotypical oh, yeah, 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 yeah. new games and everything. Really, Chris yeah, was a really yeah. smart, serious, intelligent fella, um, and yeah. pleasant company to watch his stream. I would advocate people do so. Right, what a game! Yeah, he's, he's shit at naming. He's shit at naming teams, though. <laughs> yes, that's his oh yes, 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 yes. Uh, well. Well, here you have to name like 20 charts team per season. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he's an absolutely lovely fella. Um, so yeah, you know, congrats to Cruz. Great result. Great 
played great, to be honest, comprehensively outplayed uh, Hancock. There was no real removals on either side, was there? And he just brutally outplayed him on uh, both offense and defense, I would say. So no offense, Hancock, but, you know, there you go. Um, Hancock, yeah, I mean, well, good lucky place. Hancock. Yeah, but again, yeah, sorry. The sorry. machine, the, ma the short machine was on. Yeah. Well, there wasn't much Cruiser did that I didn't like. Um, it, you know, he took advantage of the Glorious. space, but he didn't take no, too many I chances. He, he too played within himself. I'm always left on top of both and drives. I will defend. I will defend. Didn't quite find some of the excellent level. None he found, taken. Uh, How in, do in I am sub past, again? But I thought coached pretty solid. It just, yeah, didn't didn't quite find that space quite to the same level. No. And in the uh, midst of that Hancock well. resub for four months, so thank you very he much, did. Hancock, for staying fantastic. <laughs> One who will be a pregnancy. Oh, uh, <laughs> Hancock, you will be remembered as the guy that had the best uh, Ken team we have ever seen. It was fabulous. And what a run. That's, that's not a small feat. I mean, absolutely incredible. And I hope team really there. soon, like in five or ten minutes, that's what you're thinking about. Is what a great run and what a great team and how well you've done with them. And the great games of pleasure you've given us Glorious. on the route to that. Uh, no, I won't result. give in. If there was perhaps any I'm hope, victorious. it was maybe on the push turn and I that will left hand flank going even I will defend. Trying to get a couple more spaces out of it. But even then, if you had scored early, I think it probably has scored back. Yeah. So I'm not sure there was much you could do. The, the um, problem was great getting game, split, well wasn't it? That yeah, was the problem. Was. The problem was getting yeah. split. The, in, in both both halves, the problems were made like turns before when they became crucial, weren't they? That was the thing. Uh, but thank you very much, Our Yeti, for staying fantastic for 46 months. Nearly 12 who will be your pregnancies. Absolutely glorious. And uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, Fimea and PC, for coming on. Absolutely well, glorious. Uh, Yeti, I'm afraid it will just be lost in the midst of time. I can't hear the stream at the same time as talking that way lies madness. So I never know when there's uh, uh, you know uh, an alert firing. Um, yep. It's just lost. I, you know the greatest words of wisdom I've ever spoken on Blood Bowl, and it's lost. Well, there you right, go. thanks, homie Jim. Uh, I've got a hot dinner waiting from my lovely wife, so uh, oh, I'll baby. see you soon. Oh, baby. See you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Fimea. Glorious as always. It's always a pleasure to be here. It was a really good game, very tactical. So that's a proper uh, good game to watch. Brilliant. And thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.